Uh, as I said, I have experience on Beyond Rust after Azure SS1 CyberArk. Uh, as you said, uh, not only Beyond Rust, uh, the CyberArk is the most um, uh, booming um, PAM technology right now. Um, this is the cyber, uh, Beyond Rust is in the second place for now. The CyberArk is in the first place. No issue. The terminology will be different. The the concepts and the workflow, everything will be same as uh, in the every PAM product. Uh, you can easily understand if you ever able to understand a particular a single product. I'll help you um, to understand Beyond Trust today and a couple of interview questions about they are going to ask or uh, something um, where you can grow your skills on a particular field. Um, we will see um, what is IAM and PAM, what are the features and the what are the modules and the products what Beyond Trust provide. Um, the main topic of Beyond Trust is a privileged password management, which is comes under PAM itself. And the Beyond Insight is nothing but uh, we need an interface to manage everything in the PAM, right? In the identity access management. The Beyond Trust is a terminology where we use in Beyond, Beyond Trust. Beyond Insight is a terminology where we use in Beyond Trust. Um, it's a front end part. You'll, everything will be seen uh, to your naked eye. Uh, I'll show you the picture in the next slides. Uh, don't worry about it. And, and the discovery scanner credentials management are uh, the modules inside the PAM where it helps to relate the credentials. We'll see a bit later. And the U-series appliances um, is a cloud platform where beyond inside, beyond trust, everything will be provided by the beyond trust organization uh, for, for us in the, in the cloud platform, not as on-premise. And the high availability is nothing but the disaster recovery. Uh, which is mainly uh, manages the data um, like um, Microsoft uh, on the controllers. Uh, there are multi multiple multinational companies who manages uh, data um, where if you lost a particular uh, data in a particular place, you can recover that uh, the whole data from the other place. Like uh, if uh, A has uh, a location with the data, uh, data and the B2, B will be having the same data uh, where it, it, it stores. If A lost the data, then B can, B, we can take the data from the B. Uh, it will be very helpful for us if we, if we lost the data um, from somewhere or uh, by, any, by any chance. Uh, we'll see a bit later. Mm, okay. Um, coming to identity access management. Um, identity access management is nothing but which makes uh, the whole organization which make uh, build automation for upcoming users or the present users, etc. Mm, the identity access management mainly uh, concentrate only on authentication, authorization, user management, and this uh, the central user repository, uh, which is nothing but um, providing access for the particular users with uh, required privileges. Mm, I'll explain you. Mm, I'll, I'll give you an example. See. Uh, let us take uh, um, a Microsoft as an organization. Um, Microsoft has uh, n number of employees. Uh, see, if the HR want to manage uh, each and every user uh, manually, it won't it won't be easy for the HR to manage. See, in here uh, the identity identity access management will uh, comes into picture. Mm. It we take all the users in a CSV file or we push uh, the all the files all the users to the active directory first uh, using a script uh, using a powershell script or a python script where basically we store the users in a structural format in active directory which helps uh, to identify um, the users in a proper way okay uh, let's examine uh, we have an active directory with a number of users which is formatted in a structural format okay mm -hmm. see if uh, if I have, uh, assume that I have joined as an intern in Microsoft, uh, and another person joined as an um, as a um, as a full time employee, and and some other employee um, who who got promotion and moving to the next level, like the consultant to architect or something. See um, here by using identity access management, we can easily perform um, the multiple tasks uh, which are seen with automatically. Um, if if you given if they given my particular username uh, using the sale point or particular products what are the ident I am users, uh, they'll they'll automatically provide a particular access for me. The intern need need to have um, 
a little bit of axis, not not the whole whole company or the project axis, um, as um, to the my um, Office 365 or um, the simple Outlook or something. Uh, the um, related related stuff to the intern. Uh, coming to the employee who join, he'll be remain uh, to a project particular project. He need uh, each and every data from the project uh, to access or to work through the project. Um, coming to the who is who got promoted from the consultant to architect, he need uh, more little data to access from the organization. Like uh, who um, will be having a, a SVC account, which is which is nothing but the service accounts, which are the important accounts, which where we store all the project details or something. Um, the architect need may need uh, the access to that particular folder because uh, he's an architect. He need to develop. He need to uh, perform. He need to create an uh, create an architecture for the whole project. See, um, if he push um, manually for each and particular user to have a particular access to the users, it won't be help. It won't. It won't be much useful uh, here by using sale point or something using identity access management. We can by single click. We can easily push what a intern need, what a particular uh, employee who joined newly, and an architect what are the access they needed. By uh, simple, uh, as you know, the authentication authorization is nothing but providing the credentials and providing particular access for the users. User management is basically who um, um, to provide particular access to the particular person for the particular time, which is. Um, as as I said, uh, it it depends upon what role they are based on. This is uh, a simple identity access management which we use uh, multiple products: uh, a cell point, um, cell point identity IQ, cell point identity now, and IGA, Sabian, etc. These are all other products we use in identity access management. Um, coming to Pam, um, I am. Is a different product uh, coming. Uh, the Pam is a different product uh, coming to Pam. Pam basically uh, secure all all the stuff like uh, user accounts, user mailboxes, uh, user uh, folders, databases, um, file shares, uh, etc. Everything we if you want services, networks, uh, servers, everything as you can see here. These all are the what uh, the secure by the PAM, and these all are the users. See, um, assume uh, if you you have an important account. Let's take a single account from a single uh, particular uh, point from this all. Let's take um, I have a um, uh, I have an important account where it 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 should be accessed by only privileged members. Privilege is nothing but uh, as an important important access or important folder which need to be accessed by. Uh, elder or CEO or some someone who has um, who has uh, particular privileges. Uh, let us assume I have a particular account here. Um, I can't provide this particular account to everyone who who are in the project or who are in the organization. If we leave this account uh, as as usual without without providing the PAM uh, without providing PAM to that um, the hackers or the phishing attacks something they may try to attack. Uh, they may easily uh, identify the password by calculating the cryptography or something. See, if we provide this particular PAM, if we add that account to this particular PAM, if I want to allow a, uh, if I want to allow a user, this middle user, to access this particular account, you know what Beyond Trust do? Uh, if we add that account to the Beyond Trust, it it usually it uh, it is depends upon the policy creation from us. It rotates the credentials with a single click. You do, don't need to do anything for for a particular for a particular time or particular age uh, for the days or couple of months. It it may depend upon the policy creation from us on the requirement basis. It by by clicking a single click, the entire Active Direct um, database or something etc. Everything uh, everything will be um, the um, the password will be changing in a particular second. This is the main beautiful concept uh, where the password change is a beautiful uh, method which provided by the PAM. It's a single method. We have multiple n number of methods or n number of concepts in the, in PAM. This is the main topic where um, where all credentials will be secured in a particular folder 
like as you may folder in pam in beyond trust it it if if i want to allow this particular person to access this folder the user need to move through this beyond trust you, he need to check uh, he need to access that file over in the beyond trust he need to check uh, the password over there and he can access easily by normal how you log into your system this is how the pam works um we can go this is a demo we can go in depth in the future classes i have a, um uh, the ppts and etc which comes from the uh, which i have took from the beyond trust okay um, these are all the features what beyond trust provide um we are going to learn a particular concept like pam in this is a, a particular box we are going to learn for this uh, for this a uh, session uh, not this session for the whole concept we won't uh, going to explain you the other three stuffs because they all are the different methods which we which we want us provide uh, the pam is the only single stuff uh, which we learn uh, for now let me explain um, a brief uh, uh, a summary of uh, each and every everything okay um, as i explained what is pam uh, coming to this secure remote access um, you may know uh, microsoft provide a remote remote desktop access to access a particular system from uh, here to anywhere uh you we 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 use in our windows windows machines um is it it's it's applies the same concept here but we use beyond trust we use beyond trust here um the help of using beyond trust here is um you can you can you can monitor everything what um, what your user accessing user doing while accessing a particular machine or something we can uh, we can store everything in a particular uh, log files which mp which provides mp4 not uh, the microsoft only provides the log files which is written uh, in a structure format uh, but the beyond trust provides you mp4 mp4 what the user done what the user changed what user changed etc everything um, which is secure remote access which is also a beautiful concept uh, which will be helpful for who uses remote servers usually uh, we mainly use citrix or something for accessing um the user um, for the machines um coming to endpoint privilege management um, endpoint privilege management is nothing but um let me show you um let, this is a mac uh, uh let's assume that uh, we have a zoom application um while if you want to access a zoom application uh if you right click here you will find uh, run as administrator in the windows in the in windows um, see um, if if you are in a org particular organization assume that uh, organization provide you multiple applications um a various number of application but they won't provide you they won't provide you administrator credentials for that you can only run that as uh, sufficient privileges if you um, what endpoint privilege management do is um, um which blocks you to access uh, all the applications uh, it allows you to only manage uh, some particular applications Re uh, assume that if you uh, you need only 3 to 4 applications uh, from the 30 30 applications your system consists um like um zoom um, office 365 office 365 consists of outlook etc that's another thing um uh, okay we'll take office 365 too um what are the other applications we have um just uh, can you remember me uh, some applications uh, uh related to uh, uh not um, anything um there is no particular field uh, what organizations yeah, or something we use in a regular basis GitLab. let's take GitLab. 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 we have gitlab jenkins we have uh, yeah uh, etc uh, let us assume that we have 30 30 applications uh, in your system um the organization won't provide you access to access the 30 30 applications for you because you don't need them uh, you your project need only for four applications uh, like zoom etc see uh, what about the other applications your system consists that but um, if you have that uh, that all applications in your system you can access that freely right uh, if um, there may be data breaches for if you if you if you consist of that uh, all applications endpoint privilege management helps that uh, you can see the uh, application in your system but if you double click on that it won't allow you to access that particular system 
um, I don't know if you have remember, you will get a USC prompt if you, are, if you want to access a particular application which you don't have access in Windows systems. Um, you have any idea of USC prompt, user interface? Yeah, uh, USC prompt, user access control, where we get uh, in the Windows machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, see, um, that kind of all the stuff we can manage through endpoint privilege management. It blocks, it basically, um, if I want to explain in simple terms, it, it blocks all the all the visible applications to your 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 uh, your system and it provides only what are the applications you require for your project if you want other applications you want to access for externally yes you need to uh, open a particular service note ticket or something to the uh, epm ebm administrators then they can allow you to access um, for their particular products and coming to cloud secure management, which all these are, um, all these are like the PAM, who, which are, um, uh, will have both on-premise and cloud. Um, this, uh, the cloud secure management, which is only the cloud where it allows you, if it allow, which allows, uh, the persons to do be as a backend and as a supporter, like, um, see, um, if you use a Zomato application, if you have something um, something um, um, bad happen to you, like uh, if you have if you got the foot uh, bad day or something, you'll just run. Uh, you go through the agent uh, who want uh, the support uh, who can help you regarding that. It, it works as the same. Uh, you'll ha you'll having an interface. You'll get uh, the uh, you'll get the users uh, who faces. Um, 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 errors or something from the beyond trust, they'll, they'll just uh, raise a ticket in the beyond trust and you'll get that, that ticket and you need to resolve them. It's basically a support stuff. Uh, um, as a simple, you can assume that as a uh, Zomato who, who helps you to access, uh, who helps you to resolve your issue. Um, these are not the four, four, more, uh, four modules which beyond trust provide. And moving on, as I said, uh, the credentials management and discovery, um, credentials management is a, uh, the main concept in PAM. Let us, uh, let's, uh, let's move forward and, and understand how beyond trust take user accounts to its, its, its portal and, uh, how it manage each and every user credentials and how it allows other users to access, uh, the particular products and based on their privileges. See, um, um, we can, uh, we know that, uh, Every data will be stored in a Active Directory, right? Um, the other thing we can do is uh, we can add all the users to a CSV file. We can uh, push all the users through CSV file to the Beyond Trust. Um, and the other is discovery. Discovery where we uh, using discovery, we basically uh, connect our discovery Beyond Trust to a particular Active Directory. And by using by connecting that, we can pull all the users, all the required users. It prompts you what are the groups or particular users you want to pull uh, from Active Directory to Beyond Trust. Um, we can pull all the users into the Beyond Trust, and we can onboard everyone, all the users into into the into the Beyond Trust, and you can manage them based on uh, the requirement what the client provided you. These are these are all the three uh, main concepts where we need, where how we pull the users into the Beyond Trust. Because um, see, without uh, without getting the users into the beyond trust, we can't do anything. Uh, we can't manage the users at all. Um, we'll see uh, how we do the discovery management. Uh, how we how we run the scripts. Uh, how we uh, pull the users into it. Uh, everything will be uh, seen in the future classes. Uh, let's see what beyond trust uh, beyond trust provide the features. As I said, the Pass privilege access management, which provides the password safe, where we store the passwords and changes the passwords automatically. And the, as I said, secure remote access. Secure remote access uh, is a is a, as I said, uh, which provides um, um, uh, access but in uh, other systems using uh, current location, which has uh, which which the beyond trust name privilege remote access and the privilege remote support. These are the two concepts which which are part of the secure remote access. As I said, uh, coming to endpoint privilege management, uh, privilege management we can manage for the Windows, Unix, Linux, and the Mac too. Uh, and 
coming to active directory page um active directory page is nothing but uh, see if you want to manage all the linux and unix accounts from the active directory itself we can use active directory bridge uh, which we can pull all the unix and linux accounts to active directory we can um, we can we can see all the linux machines in the active directory itself in the windows and we can manage through by adding them to the privilege management or the pam it it makes us uh, easy it it make it provides a easy stuff to us uh, to manage all the data um which uh, we were all the other or uh, other products like sabaa something uh, all the products where uh, we don't we don't basically uh, we use other some other stuff to pull the unix and linux accounts and as i said uh, the cloud security management uh, as i said uh, we use the support stuff and all this uh, what we use on the on premise everything will be managed in the cloud it's cloud 2 uh, uh, it's it's basically depends upon the client requirement you may want to take the on premise you can you can go go to it uh, but um the upcoming um upcoming in the future everything will be in the cloud uh, as it everyone is moving to cloud um from the on premise because it will be easy for us to un uh, understand it if you want to support if you want some support from the beyond understand we can easily uh, we can easily assist or we can easily uh, call the beyond stream using the cloud platform because uh, if we if you take on premise you need to manage each and every stuff from your server itself uh, but um, if you take the cloud everything will be managed by the beyond trust you just use their product uh, by taking monthly subscription uh, this will be very helpful for the um, for the users who are uh, who don't want to manage all the back end stuff uh, from the organizations um, these are the features for beyond trust provide <coughs> okay um, this is a main architecture what beyond a password safe manage management managers um i can't explain you whole architecture now uh, it is a, a big loop uh, um, we need uh, some more time to understand each and every concepts or components in in, in this uh, i'll explain the components in this uh, the bt updater uh, if we if you have uh, gone through the cloud platform um the beyond trust through the internet will get a bt updater uh, uh, beyond trust provide the update for each and everything uh, we can easily install and update update here and the central policy management in and the manage manage engine everything all are these all are uh, the uh, the concepts which the password chip has um which we we this this everything this box what we see here is everything managed by the beyond inside i'll explain you what is beyond inside in in the next slide when uh, in the from the beyond inside we the, we connect through the sql server sql server we connect the both ends using the 1433 port uh, we connect both ends uh, we we push the data and we get the data from the beyond uh, by, from the password safe here But then as you know the the password it consists of um, the unix linux and the microsoft uh, windows and the mac accounts and the sql uh, even access the sql database through the rdb sessions and the or, or the ssh domains or the windows windows terminal etc this uh, this is the simple um, just uh, just you understand what is the beyond trust concept what the beyond trust provides uh, um Uh, for now um, no need to stress uh, on you what are the whole architect architecture we'll just see um, more on the future okay uh, as i said the beyond insight right uh, see everything everything we manage beyond everything we manage from this portal itself the portal looks like this as you see uh, as we use on premise um see this is the portal where we can uh, see all uh, all the stuff uh, what beyond trust provides as i said the password safe is a main con main component in the beyond inside uh, we have multiple multiples uh, like the team password team passwords and um um uh, check in check out process etc 
uh, all other concepts i'll provide you a, doc a proper document where i have created um, i have a, i have prepared and uh, everything i'll share with you uh, this is uh, the portal we can see and the assets uh, from the assets page we can pull uh, and manage all the stuff we can change the password from the password safe and the team management is nothing but uh, if a particular team managing a particular project or particular account we can um, provide a um, separate credentials for the whole team uh, not for the particular person we can provide uh, for the whole team and the analyst and reporting is nothing but uh, we as i said the bondrus provide mp4 data for uh, for the feature reference and for the security purpose we can everything find uh, over here in the in, in analytics and the reporting uh, we need to configure each and every stuff here uh, if you if you take uh, the on premise and this is the ucd appliance which is the cloud platform uh, it provides all the roles and the stuff uh, where here you need to install each and every stuff manually uh, if you took uh, the cloud platform as a ucd appliance which is named as ucd appliance uh, it automatically provides uh, everything uh, they'll provide a virtual machine for you you need to just install it 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 may took it may take you um a couple of minutes or 15 to 20 minutes to configure uh, the user accounts and uh, the passwords etc uh, this is a main uh, the maintenance page of u series appliance and coming to high availability as i said um, the disaster recovery just explain you in brief how it works um see uh, let's assume that uh, you have uh, you have installed a beyond beyond insight and you have stored all the users in um, in that uh, assume that uh, suddenly a server crash or something happened you lost all the data um see uh, if the server connection loss uh, the user may not access through the beyond trust uh, if there is any purpose or any action to access a particular account right uh, see uh, in that purpose uh will install another beyond insight uh in, in in another machine just will connect this both uh using a port number by the secure by the secure key now we will be having a security token over there just we will push this token to here and this to here and after connecting this both uh, suddenly if active active goes down immediately the active sends a message to the passive that okay um okay uh, i have got i have lost my connection can you take my um, my position and just provide all the stuff what the user want then um, the, the secondary machine will be get active and the user if they want to connect they get, they'll directly deviate it by the load balancer to this particular uh, the next server and after the primary server comes to comes in an active position and the every data what the secondary machine have will be pushed everything to the primary machine and this all um, all uh, done by the ba uh, the backend process just we connect at the two machines at the initial stages um we have a lot major companies which we which they handle um, they basically keep uh, the all the data in the different states not uh, in the beyond trust uh, we use in the different machines but the microsoft uh, someone uh, other other organizations where the data centers uh, they'll they'll implement in the other states if we if they lost the data here they can pull all the data from the other state and this is about what the beyond beyond trust and beyond trust spam what provides it's a, it's a it's a small demo uh, there are lot lot more the features and etc uh, we can learn in the beyond trust and these are the projects what i have done in the beyond trust spam um, if you want uh, i'll share you this ppt with you and you can call me anytime uh, for any queries or something um, to install the lab setup or etc um, you should you should definitely have the 32 gb of ram uh, the codes that uh, that's it depend up depends upon you uh, the one is also enough but uh, you'll see a lot of lag while you're installing or while you're working on your particular product and the storage will be it's it's better if you provide a particular around the 250 to 300 because in the future you you're, you're not uh, able to change uh, your machine's data uh, your machine storage and this is a lab setup if you want to if you want um, 
you can uh, set up uh, by taking the files from the beyond trust and this is um this is about this demo uh, that's it that's it of this this demo um these are the some basic questions what uh, the interviewers may ask you these are the general questions uh, where uh, from this demo uh, itself or not from the whole product um we need to mainly concentrate on how to install uh, uh, if you go on, go through any interviews uh, then just mainly concentrate on on uh, installations too because if you are uh, strong in the grounded uh, you can easily manage the upper tree leaves because um, the installation is more difficult in in the in the pam product than the managing um, pam products um, uh, how we store and the log, how we store and access the log files and how the appliances are managing directly uh, how we manage la la is nothing but a maintenance page which is provided by beyond trust where we can uh, take the updaters um where we can um manage um the server back end stuff etc and uh, how the user accounts managed and how we pull um the user accounts to the um, um managing server etc uh, these all are the uh, general questions you may uh, search go through the google for all these questions you'll easily find a particular a particular uh, answers uh, from the beyond us itself and no other pages have the answers for these questions and um, what are the certifications that i have done in the beyond trust is uh, i have completed the pam certification as an administrator and as i said uh, um, i have completed the pam for the windows and the unix linux and i have completed for the remote secure access and the epm2 which is endpoint privilege management and as currently i am working on the cyberr product uh, which is related to pam itself uh, beyond trust and the pam are uh, both are, uh, are um, the main uh, two organization organizations who are fighting for the first place uh, from the couple of years 